<laughs> Hello, honey. I've got a question for you. How do monsters tell their future? Monsters tell their future. Let me think. A monster's ball! A monster's ball. Uh, uh, uh. No, I'm afraid not. How do monsters tell their future? I don't know. How do they do it? By looking at their horror scope. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Shut up, you're cute. Hello and welcome to another episode of Just Another Fanboy, the only podcast that will not use a paper towel unless it comes out of the dispenser whole and intact. I'm serious. If a corner rips off, if a little piece of it just tears away as I'm pulling that freaking paper towel out of the dispenser or off of the roll or wherever I'm getting it from, it goes right in the trash, unused. Hey folks, I'm your host. My name's Steven. Greetings, salutations. Are you loving life as much as I am? I don't know. I don't know if it's possible for any one person to love life as much as I do. I don't know why I'm loving life so much. Probably, 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 I don't know why I'm loving life so much. It probably has something to do with the fact that I'm recording an episode right now, which is something I absolutely love doing. Because today, today, folks, today, buckle it in, we're talking about Supernatural Season 6. This is part two of my series talking about the television show Supernatural. And yet we're all the way to Season 6 already. How did that happen? Well, because I talked about seasons one through five in part one. There was a reason behind that. You'll have to go listen to that episode to discover that reason, because I'm not repeating it here. So if you haven't listened to that episode, why are you listening to this episode? What's wrong with you? Ugh, I probably should have said at the beginning, just another fanboy, the only podcast that berates its listeners for not doing exactly what it tells them to do. I apologize. I shouldn't be like that. So season six of Supernatural, it premiered on September 24th, 2010 and concluded on May 20th, 2011. That's 22 episodes, folks. This is the first season to have Sarah Gamble in as the showrunner for the show because Eric Kripke, who was the guy that I guess created the show and was the showrunner for the first five seasons, once he told his story, that dude was gone. He was out of there. Uh, they kind of make some jokes about that in one of the episodes during the season, which was one of my most favorite episodes. But we'll we'll get to that in a bit. So this season starts off again. If you remember me talking about this at all, if you listened to part one, I explained that Supernatural was originally meant to just be five seasons that told the story that Eric Kripke wanted to tell. And it ended with Sam jumping into the pit, the pit of hell, into the cage, Lucifer's cage, and dragging Lucifer with him. And the way he did that was because Lucifer just happened to be using Sam's body as his vessel. And so as when the season ends, Sam is in hell. Dean decides at that point that he has to honor the promise that he made to Sam, which was when all is said and done, when this is over, when I have grabbed a hold of old Lucifer and thrown him in the cage and, and, and I'm not coming back, you have to promise me that you're not going to try to get me back. You're not going to go find a demon and try to make a deal and all that stuff. You are going to go and live your life. You're going to hook up with Lisa, which was a, a woman we met during the first five seasons, and her son, Ben, and try to start a normal life with them. So that's how season six opens up. Dean is living in a new home with Lisa and Ben. He is working construction. The uh, The Impala is under a tarp in the garage, and he now drives a truck. But at one point there at the beginning of the season, during the first episode, we already know that Sam is back. We know that because when we finished season five, that last episode, the last moments of the last episodes of season five, sees Dean locking up the house. He has already moved in with Lisa and Ben. He's locking up the house. It's nighttime. And then we see Sam outside 
watching the house and we were all scratching our collective heads. So this season tells us how Sam came back, how he hooks back up with Dean and gets him back into hunting monsters. Because again, Dean is living the good life, the happy life, the normal life. And what ends up happening is during the first episode, Dean just suddenly becomes really paranoid about monsters in his life. The the I should say that this first episode is set one year after season five, one year after Sam jumped into the into Lucifer's cage with Lucifer. So Dean has now been living the good life, the normal life, the happy life with uh, Lisa and Ben for a year now. But suddenly a year into it, he starts becoming very paranoid. He thinks there are monsters around every corner and it gets to the point where he really starts to freak out. And that is the that's the moment when Sam has to kind of step in. He has been staying away from Dean this whole time uh, because in his words, basically, he figured Dean Dean got out. He got out of the hunting life. Sam did not want to pull him back in because Dean seemed happy. But what we find out is that the reason why Dean has gotten all paranoid is because he, unbeknownst to him, encounters a gin. And that gin is able to secrete chemicals into Dean's body, which forces him to hallucinate. This gin is a relative of some sort to the gin that Dean killed back during seasons one through five. And she and her fellow family, Jins, want some revenge. And that's when Sam has to intercede uh, to save Dean's life. Well, we also learn at this point that not only is Sam back, somebody pulled Sam out of the cage. They also pulled out their grandfather who had died back in the frickin' 70s. His name's Samuel, Samuel Campbell. He is their mother's father. He died in in an episode during seasons one through five back in the 70s. And not only did somebody pull Sam out of hell, they brought Samuel back to life as well. And Sam has been hunting with Samuel, but not just Samuel. There's a whole frickin' clan of Campbells, his their mother's cousins. There's and I, I say clan. There's like three of them. There's two guys and a girl and One of them is the dude that played Parker in Parker Lewis Can't Lose. I think he was even in the Stand miniseries. Not the one that's going on now, but the original one with, um, oh, what was his name? Rob something. Robert. Robbie. Robert Robertson. What's his freaking name? From St. Elmo's Fire. You guys know who I'm talking about. Why won't you tell me? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to think of that like 20 minutes from now, and it's just going to pop into my head and drive me crazy. Anyway. A lot of strange stuff, a lot of crazy stuff happens during this season. We ultimately learn that, A, Sam is acting really weird. There's something off about Sam. Dean kind of notices it right away. There's just something... Dean or, or Sam is is harder. He's 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 a bit more heartless and it really takes front and center stage in Dean's mind during an episode where they are hunting vampires and Dean and a vampire are fighting and the vampire is winning. And in this world, the way vampires turn a human into another vampire is not by biting them. They they basically bleed in the person's mouth. If you if you ingest vampire blood, then you become a vampire. And so this is about to happen to Dean. The vampire has wrestled him to the ground. It's opened a vein so it can bleed in Dean's mouth. And Sam runs up and sees this happening and he stops. He doesn't do anything to stop this from happening. In fact, we see him stand off to the side and he gets a little smile on his face because of it. Well, Dean sees this. And so he realizes something is wrong with Sam and They end up contacting Castiel because Sam doesn't know how he got pulled out of hell. They just assumed it was Castiel, but it wasn't. Cass had nothing to do with it. It ends up, we end up finding out, I believe, now that I think about it, I'm not 100% sure. It's been a bit since I've watched this season, but it was the demon Crowley who we met in season five. He was the, the king of the crossroads demons. He was the guy who was in charge of all the crossroads demons that humans made deals with. If you sold your soul to the devil, you were making a deal with the crossroads demon and Crowley was the one that he he ran that whole operation. Well, he ended up helping Sam and Dean on many occasions to try to get Lucifer back in his cage because in the end Crowley wanted to wanted to run hell and so by this point he's now the king of hell. 
And we find out that he's the one that pulled Sam out of the cage. He's the one that brought Samuel back to life. And they're both working for Crowley and they're going out there and they're finding monsters. More specifically, they're looking for alphas, basically the first, like the first vampire, the first werewolf, the first skin changer, those kinds of monsters. And Crowley is torturing them because he wants to know where purgatory is. He wants to know how to get into purgatory. Now, in this world, basically, if when a human dies, they either go to heaven or hell. But when a monster dies, they go to purgatory. So purgatory is filled with the souls of monsters. And Crowley wants to get to purgatory because he wants all these souls, because souls, each each soul has power. And there are millions of souls in purgatory. And Crowley wants them because he wants that power. That's what we're led to believe. Well, we find out that when Sam was taken out of hell... His soul was left behind. His he, he has no soul. That is why he's been acting the way he has been acting. And at first, once they find out about it, at first, Sam is, is all on board with Dean about trying to figure out how they can get his soul back. But eventually, Sam just kind of decides he doesn't really want his soul back because in his mind, he has become a better hunter because he hasn't had to worry about uh, other people. He, he didn't, without having a soul, he doesn't mind if he had to sacrifice an innocent person every now and then to, to get his job done. And so he doesn't, he doesn't really end up wanting to get his soul back, but Castiel can't do it, or at least he won't. I don't think we ever discover, we discover something about Castiel in this season, but uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Well, what ends up happening is that Dean makes a deal with death to retrieve Sam's soul from the cage and put his soul back in Sam's body. But the, the problem is, is that because he has his soul has been in hell and even what little time he has spent in hell, his soul is just all kinds of messed up. It's scarred. It's if it's put back in, in Sam's body, Sam may go a little psychotic because he's going to have all kinds of problems because his soul has just been torn to shreds, basically. Well, what death ends up doing is he he puts Sam's soul back into his body and then he builds a wall within Sam's mind. And that wall basically holds back all the memories of everything that happened between the time that Sam jumped into the pit and and, and everything that happened to him in the pit. And since he can't remember all that stuff, then the the shredded up soul that he has, it, it doesn't affect him. That, of course, ends up biting him in the butt later. Uh, but the big thing about this season is that we learn, we assume through through the first part of the season that Crowley is the big bad. And then because he is, he is capturing and, and torturing and in some cases killing all these monsters and these alphas, a woman by the name of Eve, she's the mother of all monsters. Every monster spawned from her. She is also in purgatory. She, uh, using a, a spell, these dragons, we find out dragons are part of this world, they get her out of hell and she comes to Earth and she, of course, wants her revenge on Crowley. And so then we assume at that point that she is the big bad of the season, but she's not. They end up taking her out and then we learn that Castiel has been working with Crowley the whole time. Castiel, we, we, we find out from the beginning that because Michael is now, he is also uh, when at the end of season five, when Sam jumped into the pit with Lucifer, he was wrestling with Michael at the time. And so Michael went with him. So Michael is no longer in heaven. God has left. We learn that during seasons one and five, God is no longer in charge. And so there's a power struggle going on in heaven. Raphael, the last of the archangels, he wants to be the one in power. And not only does he want to be the one in power, he wants to go back to the way it was. He wants to make America great again. And by doing so, he that means he wants to bring about the apocalypse. That was the whole point of seasons one through five, is that the angels wanted to bring about the apocalypse so that um, the world could become a paradise, despite the fact that billions of people would die because of it. Well, Raphael wants to keep things the way they were. So if he's in charge, he's going to get he's going to kickstart another apocalypse. And Castiel doesn't want that happening. And so Castiel ends up standing up against um, Raphael, but he can't do it alone. And he we find out that he is uh, he's approached by Crowley, who makes him an offer. If, if they can find purgatory, they will have access to all those souls 
He will split the souls in half with Castiel, and Castiel will be filled with these souls, and he will have the power to go up against Raphael because he doesn't, he's not powerful enough to take him on as it is. And as a little bargaining chip, Crowley gives him like a few thousand souls from hell and powers him up and he's able to take on Raphael and get the war started. And so this whole time throughout season six, Castiel is working with Crowley to access purgatory. Well, Death knows that this is going on and he tries to warn Dean, but he does it in kind of a a roundabout way. He doesn't really tell him right out that, you know, by the way, Castiel is working with Crowley. They're going to open up purgatory. And that's probably not something that you want to have done because there are creatures in purgatory that are older than than angels and demons. And and uh, they were the first things created by God. They were they're called Leviathan. And God created purgatory as their prison because they're they are not they turned out to be not a good idea. <laughs> and uh He doesn't tell him that, but he just kind of he kind of hints at it. So Dean doesn't quite pick up on it. But Dean and Sam understand that opening up purgatory is not it's not the right thing to do. It's not a good thing and that monsters will get loose. People will die. And once they discover, of course, that Castiel has betrayed them and is working with Crowley, it, of course, breaks their hearts their collective Winchester hearts. And then they have to, working with Bobby, come up with a plan to try to stop Castiel. And the end of the season, it ends with um, Castiel able to crack open Purgatory. He takes in all of these souls and he basically becomes the new god of heaven. And it totally changes who he is. And at one point there at the end, he's telling them to bow down before him and worship him as their new god or he will destroy them. And that's how the the season ends. It's actually a really fun season. I didn't really quite enjoy the way it started off. Um, I remember the first time around watching it and then watching it again this time thinking maybe they should have stopped with season five. It's one of those things where once you learn that they were supposed to stop at a certain point, but then they decided to keep going and the the original showrunner leaves and a new showrunner comes in and you're like, maybe this was a mistake. This is because I wasn't really enjoying any of the stuff with Samuel and the Campbells and D and Sam without a soul. None of that was 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 great. There was some good stuff uh, salted in salt and peppered in there every once in a while. But it wasn't until we got to the end of the season that it all came together. And uh, I ended up really enjoying the season. It's not as strong as what seasons one through five are all together, but it's certainly better than season one and season two. And there's some great episodes during this season as well. There's uh, a a few of my favorite episodes. Weekend at Bobby's episode number four of the season. Bobby, during seasons one through five, in order to they in, in order to basically uh, get into the cage to open up the portal that will take them to Lucifer's cage so they can trap Lucifer again. They have to get uh, these four rings. Each ring is being held by one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They have three of them. They need the fourth one. It happens to be Death's ring. And Crowley makes a deal with Bobby and says, look, if you make a deal with me as a crossroads demon, because of the way it all works, if if you ask for it, I have to make it happen. So if you ask me to find death, then I have to do it. That's the way the magic works. And you know what? I know you're going to have to sell me your soul to do it, but I'll give it back. Don't worry. Well, of course, Crowley's a demon. He doesn't give his soul back to him. So Weekend at Bobby's episode number four. It's actually episode 108 altogether. It's it's all about Bobby. It's the first episode so far that's just all about Bobby. And we get to learn a bit of about Bobby's life and the way he he's kind of the guy that uh, to use it in comic book terms for DC Comics, he's like the Oracle for, um, you know, Oracle or Barbara Gordon. She was the person behind the scenes that would get on the computer and do all the stuff and get all the information and, and, and help out heroes and whatnot. That's kind of what Bobby does. He's he does all the research. Hunters will call him to get advice. You know, hey, I'm hunting this certain thing. How do I kill it? And Bobby will do the research and find it out. And he also mans like all these different phone lines. So if a hunter is posing as an FBI agent and they're in a town and they they give their card to the to the chief of police, for example, and they say, well, just call my 
call my uh, boss and he'll he'll vouch for me. They call the number and they get Bobby and, and Bobby vouches for him. He pretends he's, you know, the 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 head of the FBI agent freaking place or whatever in the state or whatnot. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, you know what I'm saying? So we get to learn a lot of a lot of you know about Bobby in this episode. But there there's also some good moments where he's trying to figure out how he can get his soul back from Crowley. And he hasn't yet yet asked Sam and Dean for help. But throughout the episode, Sam and Dean are calling him for help. And at one point when Bobby is not able to help them as quickly as they want him to, they kind of give him crap about it and basically tell him that he's being selfish and he really just dresses them down and then they end up helping him and, and he gets his soul back and it's really good. Another episode I really like is episode nine or episode 113. Clap your hands if you believe. Now, I mentioned in part one that they like to do these episodes that are um, not necessarily part of the main story and that they're done for more for comedic value that kind of they're I don't want to use the word silly, but they're more fun episodes. And this is one of those. And it was set in Indiana. They 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 come to this small town called Elwood to investigate these abductions that have been happening in town that seem they they look as if these people are being abducted by aliens, which of course Sam and Dean don't believe in aliens, and, but they, they come to to investigate. And at one point, Dean is out investigating. He, he's looking over the site of one of the abductions, which was out in a cornfield where these crop circles are. And he suddenly there's a UFO comes along and and abducts him, just in, bathes him in light. And he is he is suddenly he's, he's, he disappears. Well, Sam, at this point, he doesn't have his soul back. He doesn't quite understand that he doesn't have a soul. Well, maybe he knows at this point that he didn't have his soul. But uh, yeah, I think he does know at this point that he doesn't have a soul. But uh, so while he, you know, he wants to find Sam, he's not all that invested. It's not a big deal for him to not find for Sam not to find Dean. Uh, But when Dean does come back like the next day, Dean tells him that he was abducted by aliens. And so now they're both believers in aliens. But then we learn it wasn't aliens. It was actually fairies um, that abduct people and they do it in a way so that it does people do think it's it's um it's aliens it's a really it's really funny there's some great moments in the episode there's at one point this old old homeless man that is following dean around town and dean knows he just knows he's a fairy and dean ducks into this alley and the old man's following him dean makes it to the other end of the alley and he he walks out and ducks around the wall at the mouth of the alley. And when the old man comes out of the alley, Dean jumps on him and just starts wailing on him. But what Dean doesn't realize, but we do, is it's not the old man anymore. It's actually a little person. And Dean is just wailing on him and he's yelling at him, telling, you know, he's like, I'm going to kill you, you fairy, which doesn't sound good. It sounds like it's a he's he's in the middle of a hate crime. And once he realizes what he's doing, he's attracted a crowd of people, one of which is this this poor guy's daughter. And Dean realizes he's beating on some innocent man and he kind of rolls off of him and he looks around at the crowd. and He just goes, ha, just kidding, which apparently based on something I looked up was an ad lib of his. Um, and then, of course, the police show up and they throw him in the back of this this uh, this police car. The whole time he's yelling at Sam, who shows up that Sam's got to stop those stop the fairies. You've got to you've got to stop the fairies. Uh, It was a really funny episode, but probably one of my favorites is episode number 15 or 119. The French mistake in this episode. There there is an angel who uh, is on Castiel's side named Balthazar. Balthazar, uh, at one point before this episode, he when when everything went down and, and the apocalypse was was ended and they found out that God was no longer in heaven. Balthazar stole all these angelic holy weapons from the armory in heaven, came down to Earth and just started selling them to humans and just living the life. And eventually he ends up taking Castiel's side. So he's kind of working with Castiel and he's got this. I think it's a key or something that he gives to uh, the Winchesters. Um, and telling them that they need to to guard the key against uh, Raphael, who, who's coming to get it. And I can't remember the purpose, you know, what the whole deal with the key is. Uh, I think it would maybe it was the key to the wherever he has all these weapons held. But they they're, they're, they're being pursued 
by the the angels who are on Raphael's side and they jump through this window. And I think they're in Bobby's house. They jump through this window uh, and they end up no longer in their world, but they're actually in our world where Supernatural is a TV show. And suddenly everybody thinks that they're the actors, Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles. And they have to try to act. It's really funny. There's a scene where they're trying to act during a, you know, a scene. And it's it's really good. It's re- it's a really great episode. It's it's one of those that I can't really explain why it's so funny. You you have to watch it. It's just such a, a great classic episode. There's also Frontierland, episode 18, in which they need in order to 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 kill Eve, they need the ashes of a phoenix. Well, they didn't even know phoenix they didn't even know that there that the uh, uh, phoenix existed, um, and they learned that there actually are none that are still alive. But they discover the journal of of Sam Colt, who we know from seasons one through five, who created the the gun that can kill anything. And in the journal from back in 1861, he mentions killing a phoenix. So they get Castiel, who we know can send them back in time. He sends them back to the Old West, where they have to get these ashes of this phoenix. That's a really good episode because Dean is really into it because he's a big fan of Westerns. And he he just, he really, he really sinks his feet. Is that the word? Sinks his feet into the into the idea of being a cowboy. It's really good. But it it was, all in all, it's probably not one of the best seasons out of the 15 that are out there right now. Uh, but it's definitely not one of the worst. And it does include one of my all time, uh, maybe top five favorite episodes, which is the the uh, French mistake, the one where they go back into our world. And again, it's really good. There's a there's a really great scene where they go back to uh, Jared's house and he lives in this big mansion and they have they go to use his computer and behind his desk on the wall is just this giant framed poster of him riding a horse. It's just it's really funny. They really kind of play up the whole they are kind of these vapid actors that um, I don't know, that just live the life and the lifestyle and have all this money. And and uh, Castiel, who's played by Misha Collins, he's really funny in it, playing himself. And he's always because he I follow him on Twitter. If you're a fan of Supernatural, you probably follow him on Twitter. He's he can be very active on Twitter and they really play that up in this episode. He if, if he's, you know, between scenes. He's always got his phone in his hand and he's always tweeting. It's just it's a really great episode. Like I said, it's probably one of my top five of all the episodes in all 15 seasons. And of course, I haven't finished the final season yet, so we don't know if that'll still maintain a position. But great season. Um, It's the first time out of many that we will see Castiel make just a stupid decision. And in this case, his decision was to crack open purgatory to get all the cell the the souls so that he can fight Raphael um and to team up with Crowley to do it and to lie and deceive Sam and Dean it's not the first time he makes a stupid decision like this it'll be kind of a a regular thing for Castiel but yeah all in all not the best season not the worst it was a lot of fun started out slow ended up great looking forward to jumping in to season seven how about you have y'all watched Supernatural Are you watching it now because I'm talking about it? Have you watched it before? Let me know your thoughts. You can come on to the website, justanotherfanboy.com, leave a comment to the episode, or just find me over on Twitter. I post about these episodes on Twitter and on Facebook. And uh, and yeah, that's all I'm saying. That's all I want. I want to know. Or you can just send me me a freaking email, feedback at stevenrls.com. Let me know what you think. If you want to put your thoughts together as an audio message, you can do that too. Feedback at stevenorelse.com. That email, all the links, everything you need, they're in the show notes. Everything you need to get in touch with me and to tell me what you think of Supernatural. But until then, that's the episode, folks. My name is Steven, and I'm just another fanboy. Be nice to each other. I'm out.
<clears throat> check it a check 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 it a check hello and welcome to another episode of stupid things and everything and all the stuff that's stupid hello and welcome to another episode of just another fanboy i'm your host steven and i like to poop hello and welcome to another episode of just another fanboy the only podcast that thinks of stuff this is what happens when i try to come up with funny stuff off the top of my head it doesn't work so let's just think. Let's just think what I'm going to say here. The only podcast with... Hello and welcome to another episode of Just Another Fanboy. The only podcast with more toes. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that either. The only podcast that farts on itself. Do, 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 do. This is part two of my series talking about the television. So <sighs> this is... <clears throat> And so not only did somebody, did somebody, and, but I did, 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 number nine, number nine, um,